So without further ado, um, we do something a little bit different with our speakers here. I'm not going to read out a bio. I'm not going to keep it boring. Uh, we get three fun facts from each speaker. So our first speaker, in addition to being an e-commerce entrepreneur, is actually also a visual artist. And he has works from different mediums to pottery. Super cool. He is a coffee snob, and he's always looking for the best beans. And he has a newly found obsession with fountain pens. Very random. So Daniel, come on up here and share your fuck up. What's going on, everybody? I've always been in the crowd, so it's kind of nice to be in here uh, for a change. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Daniel, and I'm going to give you just a quick background, right? Um, I did engineering. I went to McMaster. Um, graduated out of that, went into the working force, and very quickly I realized it just wasn't as exciting as what I had hoped it would be, right? Um, and it's kind of like a crisis, right? You know, people have a problem before they decide what to go to do in school. I did that after I finished and I started working. And then, anyways, I had always been the type of person that likes building things. That's kind of what gravitated me towards engineering. So I did it, and um, so eventually that kind of started being like, okay, I like making things, like building products, okay, so maybe I want to start building a business around it. Great. So out of the blue, one day I decided I wanted to start a business, right? Um, no idea what I was doing, um, so basically, this is what I did. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so that, the business is actually a coffee subscription business. Um, Essentially, uh, that's why I'm a coffee snob now, right? I'm very, very selective of what kind of coffee I drink. Um, but essentially what it did is, um, there's a problem in here nowadays where um, the coffee that you get might have been roasted maybe months ago. It's stale and stuff like that. Therefore, what the business did is, I partnered with Coffee Roasters in Toronto, and um, what I did is it delivers a freshly roasted package to your house. I don't know, maybe like four or five days uh, after it's been roasted. So that was a business model, right? Still. That was the only part that I figured out. Didn't really know how the hell to do everything else. Um, coming from a technical background, had a really, really hard time with uh, sales and marketing. And if you know anything about um, online business, it's pretty much all sales and marketing, right? And uh, I had a really hard time with it. So I consistently fucked up every single day for a whole year. But then things started making sense, right? I started figuring out you know, what to do, but it was, it was mostly like also a personal struggle, right? Figuring out how I like working and how, how to approach certain problems, how to not, you know, just get stumped after a challenge is kind of presented your way and things like that. But then it got better and better and the business, the business did well and it grew. Um, I started, you know, just doing uh, B2C, but it eventually I started selling to businesses, actually startups in Toronto. I just cold emailed like a whole ton of them and then <laughs> some people responded and then eventually started selling to them. But anyways, that went well, but the whole story today is, is not about the business and how I fucked up in it and stuff like that. It's actually about how I sold the business and what went wrong and right during that process. <laughs> so, um, so fast forward to August 2017, um, I decided uh, that I was gonna sell my business, a lot more emotional decision rather than a, a logical one, but I did. and. Um, so there's, there's actually websites where you can, online businesses where you can sell online businesses. Who knew, right? And then, but anyways, I ended up listing mine in there and it did pretty well because one of the things, look, I was working full time throughout the whole time and stuff like that. So one of the things I focused on was making sure the business was running as automated as possible, right? So by the time I had sold it, it was, it took me around maybe about 30 minutes per week to run and it was profitable, it was doing well perfect opportunity for people that want to buy a business, right? Because they don't want another business, another full-time job. Anyways, it did very, very well, and uh, actually ended up selling it for 10x uh, profit, which is kind of unheard of for e-commerce businesses, right? Um, and <laughs> another thing, yeah, it was actually uh, in a Shopify site as well. Anyways, so that went, that was great. I'm like, okay, fantastic. And then, Selling is, is a two-stage, right? You sell, it's like an auction-based thing, and then after that, you gotta close the deal, right? So sign a couple papers, so on and so forth. You transfer the asset and things like that. 
And this is literally what I felt like. Because my buyers were in the US, I'm based in Canada. Who knew it was so difficult to transfer a G Suite account from a Canadian company to an American company. Literally had to close my account and then open another one in the US and transfer all the, the files manually. Anyways, took lots of time. And then everything kind of just, I started, um, you know, providing all the assets, so like the website, um, the inventory, kind of connecting them, who my suppliers were and things like that. Everything, so from my part, uh, even though it took a long time, I was pretty much done. And then I got an email from the buyers. Um, so, and then they're like, okay, so, th and mind you, everything is kind of just transferred at this point, and they're like, there are certain parts of the term that we want to renegotiate. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, seriously? And here's, here's the, like, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't have my website. Um, you know, I transferred it to them. Normally, GoDaddy puts a 60-day hold on these things. I didn't have uh, my Shopify site. Everything, everything. Like, I, it wasn't even that, you know, the deal might not fall through, but I might also, you know, completely lose my business as well because I don't have anything that belongs to it. It was difficult. And... <laughs> really, I went from a high of like, oh my God, you know, I sold my first business to like, damn, I don't think I'm going to be able to pay off OSAP. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, it, like, it just a split a second. And uh, it was, this was a really difficult time. And I just didn't really know what to do. And essentially, um, Throughout the whole time, what had happened was since my website, like the auction of my website was doing really well, Flippa, the company that I sold it with, had assigned me an account manager. And what I did is I kept them in the loop of everything that was going on, right? This is what the buyers are saying. This is what's going on. This is, um, and then at that point in time, I also uh, got a lawyer, which I should have done, you know, maybe earlier, but <laughs> uh, I decided to talk to a lawyer to figure out, and he's like, you know, like, deal's pretty much done, you know, like money's in the bank, and then uh, money's in, um, in escrow, and assets have been transferred. It's, it's pretty much done, right? You can't do these kind of things. And uh, essentially what the renegotiation was, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subscription business. So sometimes there are certain costs that are incurred, you know, later down the month, uh, the month, right? You earn the revenue right now and then the cost has come out a couple months later. What happened was I had explicitly listed this as part of my sale, right? I was very, very thorough. One thing I'm good at, you know, that's one thing I don't fuck up at is being very thorough. And that's what I did. So essentially what happened was they were trying to renegotiate this. And it was tough because, you know, like it's an insignificant amount of money and in comparison to what the sale was. And this is kind of what the hanging point was, right? And then, anyways, I talked with uh, my, my account manager and I'm... I talked, um, I tried to come to, uh, to terms with them. Because at this point in time, it was taking about two months to close the deal. So I was just like, okay, listen, man. I'll come to the table and I will, I will refund some of the costs, right? I'll refund some of the costs. Let's come to a term. Let's close this deal. They come back and the, t and the amount of money that they came back with was about three times that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> These people are not, uh, you know, they're not serious. Right? They're play trying to play around. And... What happened at the end was essentially like an ultimatum, right? I talked with Flippa and figured out that um, <clears throat> if something is uh, happening like this, you know, the money is in escrow and assets have been transferred, you know, you can force the money to go through. Not a pleasant thing to do, but it can be done. And then um, basically sent them an email and I'm like, okay, so you have 24 hours to decide. This is what's going to happen. And if you do not accept, um, and I actually offered some of the, the costs. I just, for, uh, for good faith, I'll, I'll reimburse some of the costs. Um, but you have 24 hours to decide. And they did. They said yes. And that was it. That was, the deal was closed, right? Um, lots of unnecessary things happened in, 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 you know, just um, throughout the wholesale. But, but it closed. And I was able to pay off those up. <laughs> And then, uh, so here's, here's kind of what I want to finish off with, right? Um, I, like, I take a very scrappy approach to everything that I do, right? And um, some of the, one of the biggest mistakes that I made is I'm like, you know, I need to sell it. I don't care. I'm going to go to a website, list it there, and then just sell it and, like, figure out the things as, as they come, which, is, which worked very well for starting a business, but not so much for this side. So one of the things is, you know, be very transparent, 
um, no set expectations early on. That's kind of one of the things that I learned. And also, um, you know, silence the sales agreement, which is kind of obvious. I was a little lucky because terms of the website happened to have a sales, um, sales term, which was already implied if you, you know, agree to their terms and conditions. And then um, be very transparent, be very, very thorough, and, um, you know, Try to be um, as, uh, also present numbers, that's the thing, right? Especially online businesses, if you, you, wanna, you wanna back up everything that you say with numbers. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I learned. I mean, I know <laughs> it, it ended up going well, but it was, oh man, it was very stressful during that time. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks. thanks. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for sharing your story. You. <laughs> that was awesome. We're going to have a couple of mic runners uh, go around and run some mics. But yeah. I just wanted to say, you know, like this could have been such a bigger fuck up yeah, it than could. it was. <laughs> and I think like it's so valuable to hear the story and like see that it could have been so much worse if like just like he did some like things to prevent it. So I really hope that some of you here who are thinking about selling a business in the future or maybe right now really like take the story very seriously. Yeah. So who wants to kick us off with the first question? Also side note before that, um, it, it's a lengthy process and I did write a blog post of how to list the product, uh, like a business to sell and also how to close the business to sell. Yeah, if you guys wanna read that, it's in my website, danieladonai.com. So. Yeah, if you're interested in that. Hey. Hey, man, uh, thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. Um, you said you had, it was a subscription-based business? Yes. Um, roughly how many users do you have before you sold, and how long were you operating as a brick and mortar before it sold? Uh, so I, I, it was not brick and mortar at all. It was, was that all online. you in the... Yeah, that was, you know, it was... Oh, that it was, was the operation like, uh, behind it. Yeah, it was like the coffee roaster I was partnering with. Um, and yeah, I just went to their place. I'm like, yeah, I need to take some pictures of the website, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were pretty cool too. Um, and so yeah, like I think about hundred and something customers uh, split between Canada and the U.S. So just to give you an, uh, an idea, some of them were business customers, so they're like worth right, right. you know twenty. Big account. Yeah, exactly. Right. And uh, yeah, so split around Canada, U.S. We had some in Europe, one or two, a few. Yeah. And how long were you in? Operating as the business before it sold again? Yeah, I think I did this for about three years. So it's kind of like a side side gig. Kind of just started slowly, one customer, two customer, all the way to 100 or so. And uh, yeah, so I was working during, during that time. So that's why it took a bit of time for me to kind of figure out what was going on and stuff like that. But yeah, it took about three years and then I sold it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, Daniel. Hey, hey, Wazzy. What's up? <laughs> How's it going? Okay, so I wanted to know, um, looking back now, are you happy with who you sold the business to? Like, are they still continuing the uh, vision that you initially had for the business? Or do you wish you still kept the business and maybe took some time before you sold it? Yeah, um, I'm going to answer the easy part of that question. Um, I'm, I'm very happy I sold because I, I was at a stage where just, you know, I wasn't as interested in the business. And it was kind of just to let, it was time to let somebody take on the, you know, to carry on the business. Um, I can't really comment on, you know, what they're doing and how well they're keeping it up. I don't really keep track of it, to be quite honest. I kind of just completely moved on. That was the plan, and I stuck to it. All right. Okay, that's Thanks. good. Thank you. I think there's a few people here. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Um, hi. Hey. Thank you so much for your story. Yeah, it's very, course. very entertaining. Um, my question is actually similar to what you just said. Yeah. Um, how do you know it's time to sell versus sticking with the dream? Yeah, oh, man. Like That's why I said it was a, a more emotional-based decision than a, a logical one. Because it, it was making money. Um, yeah, like, it was OK money, right? But um, I think. You got to look at, you know, like where you wanted to go to. I, at that point in time, I just wanted to drink coffee and not necessarily sell it. And <laughs> so it just, for me, it was kind of just coming to, you know, having a conversation with myself, as weird as that sounds, but uh, deciding what was important for me and what direction I wanted to head into. And uh, it's tough, man. I can't, I can't say it was easy. And it took, it took a long time. I think I, I kind of knew I, I needed to sell it for maybe about, six, seven months or so, and then, yeah, and then one day I just like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And that's it, yeah. So no easy answer for that. 
Hello. Hi, Daniel. Hey. I'm Danielle, so easy, <laughs> easy name to remember for you. Um, question about uh, when you mentioned that selling at 10x profit is pretty unheard of in e-commerce. Yeah. Looking back, was that a red flag at all? And were there any other red flags about the buyer that came up before the deal was actually signed? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so yes and no. Um, it, it, it is fairly high for e-commerce businesses, but also, um, the business took 30 minutes to run per week. So considering all of that, yeah, it was, you know, you, you can have it technically. If you didn't do anything, it would going to keep making money and, you know, you can have it on the side, right? So I wasn't too, too surprised about that. Um, and absolutely no red flags, actually. Um, you know, I was very um, present throughout the whole sales process. You know, I communicated with the buyers. There's multiple bidders. I think, I don't know, maybe like... 17 or so bidders to try to bid on the business. And, uh, you know, always made myself available, always messaged them first. I'm like, hey, this, do you have any questions, right? You're putting in a lot of money on this. Do you want me to answer any questions? And uh, no, there wasn't, there wasn't any red flags. It um, all just happened at the last minute. So there was, yeah, there wasn't anything I could have done to protect myself or could have noticed some things. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Daniel, over here. Where are you? Mysterious. Hey. The back hey I'm like, Great presentation, man. Thanks. So, yeah, just a question. Like, what was your thinking? Because I'm, like, thinking about this business. And, like, yeah. what, have you ever thought of, like, just finding someone on Upwork, hiring them, outsourcing it, and then you'd have passive income until now doing that? Like, what's your thought process on, okay, I want to make a killing right now, one payment, or mm -hmm. why don't we outsource this and just, like, I review it five minutes a week, and then I have passive income for, like, 20 years? That's exactly what I was doing. So that 30 minutes wasn't actually being done by me. It was uh, actually... <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, like, one thing that I've learned so much on is how to automate things. And, you know, like, the more decision you make, it's just like you become a bottleneck and things like that. So that's one thing that I've worked really, really hard on. And, yeah, so I, I did do that. And it's just... Oh, by the way, I do have another business right now that runs exactly the same way. Um, maybe put in, I don't know, half an hour to an hour per week on it. And it's... You know, fully operations runs the same way. It's just at that point in time, that business, I felt like I kind of took it to, you know, however much I, I could take it. And then it's just like, it, like I needed, I needed to challenge myself with something else. And um, and keeping it was like, if I kept it, like it, it would have been fine. But like tax season, I don't have to think about it a little bit more than thirty minutes per week. So uh, <laughs> I just wanted to like completely get rid of it. That's that was that was the decision why. Yeah, cool. And also, too, when you're like outsourcing, is your main thing using Upwork? Or do you have some secret portal that no one's heard uh, about that year? Yo, actually, I, I use Upwork, but I have. Do you use Trello? I have yeah, this yeah, I massive uh, like brain dump of how to do every single thing in my business. I actually show it to a bunch of people. Um, let me know if you're interested. But essentially, it's like. Um, how do you do customer service? Like, what do you do if this question gets asked? How do you respond to it? Da, 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 da. And then, uh, like, how do we upload products? How do we find our suppliers? How do we pay them? Literally everything that you can think of, it's in that Trello board. And uh, essentially, one thing that I've learned is you can hire anybody. But hiring anybody when you're overwhelmed, probably the worst idea because you just give yourself another full-time job to train that person. If you don't have any infrastructure built to, like, train them, you know, in a very hands-off type of way. And yeah, that's what I do. Um, yeah, like this massive troller board and it's been going for maybe like two years now and it's getting maintained by the people that uh, in my team and uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> awesome, man, I'll hit you up for that if that's okay. Yeah, of course, thanks. <laughs> so we'll do one last question and we'll leave it there. The speakers are gonna be sticking around after all the yeah. talks so you can come chat to them in person as well. You guys can buy me a beer. <laughs> Hey, Daniel. Hey, we're... Oh, yeah, we're one. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. So uh, I've been with you through the story, and it was awesome. I know. He was, he was with me as I was stressing through the days after I sent that email. It's crazy. <laughs> What's up? What, what customer number was I? Which Three? one? Customer number on Nomad. What? Never mind, never mind. I, 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 Anyways. I so, so my question is, um, you know, now that you're running your other business, um, is there any like fuck ups that just keep coming up over and over from your old business and where you're like, shit, I need, should have learned that from my last one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think um, I start to realize, sometimes, and you can go down this rabbit hole where um, sometimes you start thinking having more products is gonna, it's gonna be better. And one thing that I definitely messed up on with this current business is that, right? Um, sometimes it, you know, 80-20 rule, right? Keep your products low, keep the ones that make 80%, 20% um, of them that make 80% of revenue, keep that. And like, the problem is it's like, when, you know, day to day going into it, like doing the work and stuff like that, it kind of just slips by and you keep making these consistent mistakes. And I think this is the biggest one because, you know, like more product is more inventory fees and more maintenance, more customer service, more variance, like tons of stuff that can come up. And, and I think that's the one that I made, I keep consistently make a mistake with, but hopefully I, run with the, I learn with the next one, but yeah. I'll share other ones if I come up, though. Thanks. Thanks, dude. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing your story. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. So before.